All right, good morning, Living Faith. I know you guys can't be here in the, in the little room here, but you're not missing anything in this room. God is where you're at right now. We're going to worship God this morning. We're going to get a great message, and I want you guys to remember that you are the church. This building is not the church. The walls are not the church. The people are the church. Jesus said that you're my church. So we're going to go out, and we're going to keep on being the church, and we're going to reflect how Jesus is still in control by the way that we live our lives. We're not going to have fear. We're not going to have doubt. We're going to trust in him, and we're going to worship him because God's good. He's on the throne still. Even if we can't be out in public, God's still on the throne. So let's worship God this morning.
So at this time, just go ahead and give God a huge shout of praise. Make your neighbors wonder what's going on. And on your Facebook, go ahead and share it as a watch party. Make sure some people know how to find out what's going on. God's still sending out his message through the pastors in this community. And here comes yours. And th thank you, Jesus. It's a good day for us at Living Faith Church. And we're so glad that you're live and streaming with us and watching on Facebook Live or in the Internet or on our website. I'd like you to just to check in, of course. You can actually check in at Living Faith Church because you're at Living Faith Church even on, on the stream right now. And then the other thing that you can do is, uh, as Chuck, I want to exemplify that. Please share this message. It's a message of hope that you need and that you'll have in your life today. Um, go ahead and give me some comments on there, and um, we'll go ahead and do some shout-outs on you today. We want to welcome you and just do that and thank the Lord for us. Thank the Lord for you today. Um, if you're a first-time guest, make sure you text us that. Say, guest, first time. Uh, there'll be a phone number that you'll get in a moment today. I also want to invite you to get some communion elements in a moment right now. And you'll be able to do that by uh, a bread and some juice, whatever you got. Some of you guys are going to use real wine, maybe because it's leftover from last night. I don't know, but get some, get some communion elements, cup, uh, wine, juice, whatever it might be. And uh, a portion of bread. And we'll take communion at the end of the message. But be ready for that. And that will be a blessing today. I also want to tell you about a, w one thing right now. Would you take some pictures in your pajamas? Well, maybe you're in your bedroom. A self that you're watching right now. We'll post those on our social media. Make sure they're PG-13. Make, hey, make them PG. Wouldn't that be better? So go ahead and have that for us. And we would love to just share the experience. You can hashtag Living Faith SA and that it will help us also prepare your hearts for communion as you do that. The next and final thing, one more thing before we begin the word uh, with you today. Any Woman Can is one of our city missions that we reach out to. We support several missions full time as a church. We do seven missionaries all over the world and we do a few here in our city. And we'd like to thank the Lord for any woman can. They're a pregnancy center um, that saves lives and saves babies and saves mamas and does counseling. And they're reaching out all for free. They're an agency that reaches out. They even have several locations. They've grown from one to, I think, about two, uh, three locations. And so recently, a note came like this. A woman came in and said... Uh, she's going to carry her baby. This was a woman that was going to go outside the state lines for an abortion. And she had planned, she changed her mind after receiving counsel at Any Woman Can about how precious and sanctity begins and birth begins in, within the womb. And um, so she's 10 weeks old now. And even the baby put on a show when they did the sonogram. The baby waved um, at the camera at the sonogram. And that's good news. And as they gave us this note, there were tears in uh, the counselor's eyes that wrote the note to us as we support any woman can. Your, your giving allows us, your generosity allows us to the Lord for it. We're Living Faith Church, faith that you can see as we gather, grow, and shout back, go, amen. And so we thank God. I think I heard that. You should have your message notes handy right there as they float down on the bottom of the screen. We, we have people that are even serving outside in satellite areas and helping us do that, and we thank God for it. And so follow along uh, with the message, and you'll be blessed today. First and foremost, my wife and I would like to tell you how much we miss you. From the bottom of our hearts, this thing's gone on too long. We're staying inside because we're safe of course, and we're doing the things that we're supposed to do, so this thing passes over us today. But as a church family, we very much miss you. You're in our hearts. We're in our, our daily prayers are for you, living faith, and we thank God for you. We can't wait to see you again. As I look at the sanctuary of Living Faith Church, I know where you sit, um, many of you, and you're in that chair, and I know that family, and if I called out everybody We'd be here for a little bit of time, but I know exactly where you sit, and I miss you, and I can't wait to see you again very soon today. Well, we've never seen anything like this. Um, the COVID-19, we've, uh, in our lifetime, coronavirus is spreading. Today. It's a challenging season, as you know it. Um, there's things that have come to a halt Maybe your work has. Uh, maybe the future right now. Maybe you're busier than ever. I, I want you to know that God is. 
And he is a God that has control. So what should we do at this moment right now as we present the word of God to a, a culture, a society, a world that needs to hear the good news of Jesus today? And I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to have all this crazy faith and uh, life is and you underreact. I don't think that's the answer. Are you going to buy extra sand sanitizer, hand sanitizer? Are you going to uh, buy extra toilet paper and hide out until this thing passes over because the end of the world is coming? I don't think that's the answer either. What I do know is this. I am a man of faith, and our church is called Living Faith today. I don't pretend to be an expert about this thing. I don't think the experts even know what's going on that we watch on the news every day to give us the briefings. But I have an outlook of faith with you today because that's what the church should do. We are people of faith. And so we rise to the occasion. And that's our name, Living Faith. And the people that have a church um, that are not part of one church, this church down the street or that church down the, not, not the church of Jesus, the church of the Bible, all believers, faith rises during this time and we should have faith. We should also have common sense. That means we should continue to wash our hands. We should continue to do the things of staying out of crowded areas. God gave us a brain and the brain should tell us that maybe we should not um, uh, uh, avoid crowds and we should exercise a little bit more during this time. Shouldn't we get some sunlight, take your vitamins and do the things that you're supposed to do and make sure that you rest during this time today. In the name of Jesus, we do that. God has not forgotten about his people. It is not the time that we decrease. It is the time that we increase in God today. This setback time, this time of reset is a time that you would drive more into the word of God, that your faith level would rise today. He's given you an opportunity now that you should be still. And at the stillness of it, you should read God's word. You should pray more than ever before. Thank God for family coming together. When the world is shaken, fear can spread pretty easily like it has been today. But God's promise to each of us is that he would never leave us or forsake us. And God is with us at this very moment today. Today, I, I know that I'm trusting God right now than ever before. Somebody ought to shout in their house today. Come on, you can do that. Would you? Because God's been so good to you right now, it's going to be a little bit strange right now. But would you give just God five seconds of praise right now? Come on, you can do that right now. You don't have to be in church to do this right now. We can thank them. I know they're going to look at you. They're drinking a little bit of something, uh, maybe some Kool-Aid or something like that. Your kids are. But go ahead and lead it, Dad. Mama right now filled with the Holy Spirit. Grandma that shouts and bucks in church. Now you shout and buck at your own home right now. Go ahead and thank the Lord. Yes, Lord, I thank you right now. Be magnified in this very moment right now because you're greater than anything we've ever faced in this world today, God. In the name of Jesus, we praise you today. Uh, we're created to be with others. Did you know that? You're not meant to live like a monk in a, in a, a cave. No, God's called you out of that today, amen? It brings me to, day, to today. And we're meeting today right now. Our city's are in quarantine. It seems like the world is coming to an end. Schools are shut down. Churches are shut down. There are travel bans. Groceries are out of Amazon, still out of toilet paper. How many have looked? Yeah, we're trying to get it delivered. So what should we do? Ignore it. Our stockpile a bunch of, uh, of stuff and uh, hunker down for the next three months. No, it, it's a pause right now. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm admitting that with you. It is a real pause. But I always say this about life when things are coming at me that I don't know anything about. I don't make any long term or permanent plans or decisions today. Uh, when I find myself in moments of crisis today, it's never time to project on how it's going to be in one day. No, we live day by day in moments like this today. And it's always best to live with a decision in your heart of what you're receiving from God today. Not from the news, that's great. But if you're on 24-7 news, that's too much. Or if you're on your feed phone all the time, that's going to be too much today. You pray, you read, you watch the news, but not 24-7. 24-7 is better in the Word of God today. As disciples of Jesus, I have a different filter as a person that follows Jesus, along with the people that are watching me right now, as disciples of Jesus, we have a different filter. We filter things that were not of this world. 
because we're not. This earth is not our home. I need to remind you of that. The kingdom of God is our home. Heaven is our home today. We're not of this world, so we're not to be conformed to this world, but we're to be transformed with the renewing of our mind today. And so as Christ followers, our mission still on this earth, because we're temporary, is that we still reach a hurting world. Do you understand that today? Can I hear a good amen? Yeah, you, you, you're, you're put on this world, even during this uh, virus, to still help hurting people. It could look in a different, it could look many, you could still pray. Every one of us can still pray. Every one of us can still wave at people. Every one of us can still text somebody or call somebody on the phone and check on them like many of you are doing. And I applaud you today to continue to do the mission of Christ. And so we have faith over fear and we are not afraid like the world. We're different today. Amen. I'm going to give you three ways that we're not like the world. Number one is this. We live by faith, not by fear. Amen. There you are. You shouted back at me, right? Uh, Jesus in John's gospel of John chapter 14, he's comforting his disciples. And so in John chapter 14 on the screen, it says this uh, one. And then I went to 27. I don't know what got, got into me. I just jumped all these verses. OK, so here it goes. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And isn't it a day that we live in a day of fear like never before? Trust in God, but also trust in me also, because Jesus was the living example of God in the flesh. Verse 27, I'm leaving you with a gift. I love gifts. How about you? And it's a gift. Look, look what you get. It's a gift of peace of mind, of heart, a peace that I give is the world cannot give you. And so do not be troubled or afraid. We have this gift, and I'd like you just to receive it from heaven today. It's a gift that the world can't give you. It's from heaven. And when you receive that gift, it's a gift from heaven. And as you get it today, it's of peace. And it's of peace of mind and it's peace of heart today. It goes beyond any human understanding that we have today. And that's the peace of God. And let it come to your home today, beloved, today. I, I know that God doesn't do the one-handed clap. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. It was in China, and then all of a sudden it spread. I, was, I, I didn't see that coming. I was worried about the political elections going on and the primaries. I didn't see. God is still in control. God is still faithful today. God is good, and God has a plan. God will never leave us or forsake us today. God is working everything out. God is fighting for you today, and he's going to be the champion in your battle today. Paul said it this way. On the screen, it says 2 Timothy 1.7 are in your message notes today. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. That's not of God. Where is this coming from? God doesn't give me fear nor timidity. But he gives you power, love, and a sound mind, self-discipline today. So if we're not panicking today, Thank God for peace today. And we're not fearful today. It's because we have faith in God. Could somebody say faith in God today in your home, in your living room today? I'm so glad that Paul continues to even write to the Corinthians. And he says, we live by believing. That means faith. We have God. We have faith in God today. Not by what we see today. We live by faith, not by fear. Why don't we go ahead and thank God right now for his gift of peace right now. Peace that passes understanding. Thank you, Lord, for your peace right now. Your gift of peace today. Amen and amen. We live by faith, not by fear today. The second thought is this. We are sacrificial, not selfish today. It's our nature to be sacrificial. If you have Christ within you, if you have Jesus within you, you have a sacrificial nature to do because of the way he lived Today, Jesus didn't come for the well. He came for those that were sick. Jesus didn't come for people that were religious. He came for people that were sinners, just like you and me today. Today, so thankful. How many have ever had to give your two year old um, selfish lessons? When my children were growing up, I never had to do that. Uh, I see children today and the first thing that they do when they get that toy, the Terrific twos, as they say, is mine. It's mine. You can't take it away because we're born with this sin nature 
that it's all about me. But God's people live this way. We have a new nature. We're sacrificial, not selfish. Paul told the believers at Philippi in Philippians 2, 3, he says, don't be selfish. Hey, that, 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 that's not you. Don't try to impress other people. But this is you. Be humble. Think of others that are better than yourself. Don't look out for your own interest, but also for the interest. In other words, Paul is saying, don't freak out like everybody else is freaking out. And don't be selfish, but look out for other people during this time. Especially, we have marching orders. We have a mission of God today. During the early church in the first century in the book of Acts, the early church faced extreme persecution, extreme hardships. More than we'll ever face, I think, on this present season today. And they didn't lose their faith. In other words, they did the opposite. They increased. They didn't decrease. They didn't hide out. They increased in their faith today. And they didn't hoard goods. In other words, the first century Christians, they didn't go to the Jerusalem HEB and take all the toilet paper. They shared. Yeah, they didn't grab emergency. We're the body of Christ. The Bible tells us that we put other people ahead of ourselves today. And don't shout me down. Choir, they're, they're, put, they're, telling, they're amen in me. You can hear them right now. <laughs> And I want you to amen me. And we need to do this. And we can do this because we have the Spirit of God. The Bible says that they sold properties and possessions so no one would have need. They really went beyond themselves. Also, they continued to meet every day in the temple courts. And they, they, they met together. On a, they broke bread in their home. They ate together. And they had sincere hearts. That was the story of the early church. They were blessed to be a blessing. And they didn't hoard it all. You have something to give. You might say, well, I'm not supposed to go outside. Of course you're not. You're not supposed to leave your house. You're supposed to stay, stay put as much as you can. But you do have hope. You do have faith. You do have love right now. And so I want you to encourage not to give up today and to continue to meet. It could be on social media platform. It could be inviting others to church. But you continue to meet and you continue to break bread. You continue to be together, even if it's via texting or so forth today. Our church will start out doing Zoom meetings this week because we're supposed to meet together. Our church will continue to meet, stream online and doing whatever we can to reach people with the good news, not the bad news, the good news of Jesus today. Amen. And so there are many people right now, countless. The world is looking for hope. And who else can give that to them if it's not God's people that's you? Join the On Church Line movement. It's the best movement of all. If you're going to have something to do online, on Facebook, join the church in spreading the gospel. Spread this message wherever two or three are gathered. In my name, there I am in the midst of them right now. As a family, you're watching online today. Uh, junior's there and mama's there sitting next to you and you're... Your honey bears there, whatever it might be today. I want to remind you, next to God, the most important thing that you'll ever have is your family. During this time of pressure, during this time of hurt and pain, and what are we going to do? Don't let it ruin your family. Invest in your family. Dad, lead people as the high priest of your home to lead them in the things of God. Mom, if you're the spiritual barometer and the the thermostat in that home today, you're raising the level and you're pressing more into God and you're leading your children. In a moment, we'll take communion together. Dad, lead that as we do that today. See, the choice that you have is to build your faith. Are the choices that you would have fear today? Faith is like a muscle. I know you didn't recognize it right now, but come on, you know, like me, you know. <laughs> faith is like that muscle. And sometimes after you work out in the natural you're sore, you're uncomfortable because you haven't worked out. And faith will be like that because faith is trusting in God when there's not a bridge to cross and it's invisible. Trust is taking that leap where there's nowhere to land. And that's what faith does. But you begin to build that muscle of faith and you begin to build that muscle of faith and you begin to realize God's been faithful to me. God will be with us. God will never forsake us because you have a history of God today. Fear is a robber of faith today and fear is the enemy of faith today. You can choose today to live in fear 
And it will rob you of your faith today. Or you can live in faith and increase your faith. Begin now. How can I be a blessing to my community? How can I put others before myself? I want you to ask that as God's people today. This note came on our Facebook page like many did in churches all across America. And I just want to highlight our church because that's what I'm about to take. Amen. But if I go to other Facebook, all of our brothers, all of our pastors in our community are doing excellent work in reaching their communities of faith. We need to support them. You need to support your own church. If you're visiting this one right now, go back to your own church and give there. Support there. Amen. And thank God for it today. This one was off our Facebook page and it said this. I had their Facebook page, but they were talking about Living Faith. I attend Living Faith Church that has a heart for people. I'm very blessed and honored to serve alongside awesome brothers and sisters that attend and that are members there. Since I've been in quarantine, younger people have called to see if I needed anything. As a senior adult today, we live. My husband was out of Coke Zero and he loves Coke Zero. (laughs) In the next day, a couple of people delivered Coke Zero right outside our door. Others have taken us water and other items for seniors. And they're checking on other people in our church today. My heart is so lifted. My heart is so overwhelmed with God's love. We are a blessed congregation. And she says, I love you all. And she says this scripture, which isn't on the hand. Greater love has uh, no man than to lay down his life for somebody, his friends today. John 15, 13. Every member of Living Faith Church, you got your marching orders. You should continue to minister today. We are sacrificial. We are not selfish. Finally, the third point is this. We shine the light and we do not hide the light. We shine, we don't hide the light. In Matthew 5, 14, you are a light, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do you put a lamp um, under a bowl. Instead, you put it on a stand uh, so it lights up the whole house in the same way. Let your light shine before others. What does it say right there? You let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. This is for the world and glorify your father in heaven. During this time, people are afraid. Christians are afraid, maybe. And they need to see somebody that's not wrestling so much with anxiousness. You may be honest. Help my belief, Lord. And you may say, I am afraid right now, even as God's child, you push through it. Let faith arise right now. You can do this because God is within you today. Maybe you're anxious today and people are looking for hope. Let's become hope dealers. Can you say that? I'm a hope dealer right now in your living room. Let's become light shiners, love givers, people that have faith in their life that are rising right now. This virus is very contagious. But I want your faith to be even more contagious during this time. I, I pray right now that the followers of Jesus become more contagious with their faith, with their hope, with their love towards the world today. Let's spread hope. Let's spread love. Let's spread faith today. Amen. I'm believing that. Let, Lord, let it spread faster than the virus today. Let it spread. Let spread the faith of God all over. In the darkest points of history, God's light is always shining brighter. And that's you, beloved. We shine bright. The child of God is meant to shine brighter today. You're not of this world. I went and did a study that's not in your handout today, but you're just going to have to listen to me about what you're not today. The Bible has this word not in it, and it's in there a lot today. It says this, do not grieve or panic for those that don't have hope. We're not supposed to do that. It says we're saved by grace, not by works. Are you with me today? Do not set your mind on earthly things. That's social media. That's the news 24-7. We set our mind on things above today. Let's persevere and finish the work. Not lacking anything today. Let us not become weary in our well-doing today. Do you get that with me today? We'll, we'll, we will, we're in a battle. Do you understand that today? And we're going to persevere today. Amen. And so the Bible says this. We don't struggle. We struggle not against flesh and blood. That means people. You don't fight people today. But we we fight against the rulers and the authorities. 
the, uh, the powers of this world today. And that's who we fight today. We will not be overcome by evil, but we will overcome good with evil. We will overcome evil with good today. It says that the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. and We will not grieve like the rest of mankind does that does not have hope. We will not give up meeting. We will not be afraid. We will not be ashamed of the name of Jesus. We will not um, be ashamed of Jesus. Uh, we will uh, spread the gospel to everyone that believes, like first century Christians today, um, we, that faced persecution and faced hardship. They couldn't stop talking about the name of Jesus. They couldn't stop praising the name of Jesus. They couldn't stop worshiping. They couldn't stop sharing. They couldn't stop shining. This is not a time to be anxious, the Bible says, but it says by everything with prayer and petition, we go forward today that we make our requests known to God today. We're different. We're not of this world today. Our mind is not conformed. We are transformed by the mind of Christ today. Amen. We live by faith, not by fear. We're sacrificial. We're not selfish. We let our light shine and we do not hide. Finally, the final verse is this. It says, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says this, that we have a treasure, and that treasure is who? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. But we're these, here's the bad news, we're these jars of clay. We're the mud. Look at that neighbor that's next to you. Look at that child and say, you're mud. I know you're going to hurt Junior's feelings. I know you're going to hurt her feelings today. Hey, hurt his feelings. He's mud. But because we have Jesus, amen, something's indescribable within us today. All this all surpassing power is from God, not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed, perplexed, but we are not in despair. We may be persecuted, but we are not abandoned. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. And that's our cry. And faith is over fear today. I sense God's love right now that's in your living room on your phone maybe you're wearing your pajamas still in bed that's okay right now you'll be back at church soon without the pajamas today yeah you have this moment and god is there in your home god will never leave you or forsake you you are not alone today let us pray heavenly father i ask that you would build the church full of faith right now and that our light would shine and god for those that are hurting confused right now, anxious and worried right now. I pray for them to be strengthened as believers in Jesus. For those that are sick right now, I pray for healing. I curse the coronavirus. I curse fear right now. I break off depression off of people's lives in the name of Jesus. I pray for the protection of God to be upon the church right now, upon believers worldwide right now. Lord, those that are seeking you right now, may they find you. I pray for wisdom. I pray for a vaccine to come. I pray for global economic settings right now, Lord. The atmosphere right now of health right now coming back to our economy. I pray for leaders right now that make decisions. Thank you, Lord. I pray for our medical warriors right now. They're on the front line. Keep them supernaturally healthy during this time. They're touching my heart every time I see them, God, in action. I pray that you would bless each health worker right now, each medical warrior right now. We pray right now for divine healing for those that are affected right now. I pray for the church to rise with the Holy Spirit right now, like never before, to be great witnesses upon the face of the earth right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. As the church begins to grow brighter in a dark world, that may be you as a believer. Would you just lift your hands right now, just a little bit right now, as a Christian, as a disciple of Jesus? I want to pray for you. Thank you, Father. We're the followers of Christ. I thank you that we would continue to love generously. That we would not be selfish, but we would be people of sacrifice. Thank you, Father. Use us and let the light of Jesus shine through us as a church today. As I keep praying right now, you may have tried everything. You may have, and it leaves you empty. You may be in great fear right now. They ask me, are these the last days? Yes, they are. Because all of us 
As soon as we bo are born, even as an infant, we begin to die. And so we begin to live our last days. We're promised, according to the book of Psalms, like 70-something plus years. And that's good. And so all of us are approaching our last days, even if you're a young person in this room watching me right now in your, on your screen today. You need Jesus today. You need something bigger than you, better than you, that's more solid than you, because you may have tried everything and it's still leaving you empty. That's God saying today, keep searching and you'll find me. And you can find Jesus right now. This simple prayer that I'll lead you in right now, you pray it. Say yes to Jesus. You're far away from God right now. You're coming back to him. I want to know about that today. But I want you to pray right now with me. Say something like this. My Father in heaven, forgive me of all my sins. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. His cross, his death substituted my death. I was supposed to die. But Jesus paid the great price that I might not die, but I might live. Thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. Wash me clean today. I'm new. I'm a new creation today. I celebrate new life right now, and I thank God for it that it's within you today. Amen and amen. If you'll connect with us, we have a, a, a phone that you can text to right now. Let us know right now. It can be a private message on that text phone. We'll treat it with dignity today. We'll treat it with privacy, but 210 204 4416. That's 210 201 4416. If you'll text us today, tell me I made a decision for Christ today. I'm saved. I'm a new creation in Christ today. We'll shoot you back something of encouragement. We want to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, we want to make sure that we're praying for you. You can do that. You can also post it right now on Facebook Live or hit us up in our, um, on our website today. We're going to take communion. Are you ready to do that today? Yeah, I have my elements ready, and I want you to get yours right now today. We're breaking bread today. Go ahead and do that. Amen. I should just take a moment for you to do that today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is a meal that heals. That's why I take communion at my home. I don't need a church to take it. I don't need somebody walking me through. You can read the Gospels of Jesus just like I can, and walk yourself through it. It's a simple meal that provides for you today. And so on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. And they took and eat. Let's take the body of Christ right now. Lord, by the stripes of Christ, my brothers and sisters, as I share, um, the bread are healed. A coronavirus stripe was laid upon Jesus. Heal our world, Lord, as we take this bread and as we take this cup today. The blood of Jesus wash over us today. It's better. It's better. Yeah. The blood of Jesus is better than any vaccine today. Thank you, Lord. I lift up the cup like manner he lifted the cup he said this is my blood that's poured out for you in the remission of your sins take and drink of it all of it right now we take the blood of Jesus together Empty-handed, crying. 
crying out in the midst of my despair. There you were in the shadow, holding out your hand. You met me there, and now where would I be without you? Where would I be, Jesus? You were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story, lifting me up from the ashes, carried my soul from death to life, bring me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You are, you are my rescue story. You are, you are. You were writing the pages before I had a name, before I needed grace. Singing songs of redemption every time I ran away. You were louder than my shame And now where would I be without you? Where would I be, Jesus? You were the voice in the desert Calling me out in the dead of night Fighting my battles for me You were my rescue story Lifting me up from the ashes Carried my soul from death to life You were my rescue story. Never gave up on me. Never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Yeah. Never gave up on me. Never gave up on me. You were my testimony. up on me. You are my testimony. You are the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You are my rescue story, lifting me up from the ashes, carried my soul from death to life, bring me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story, lifting me up from the ashes, carried my soul from death to life, bring me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You are, you are. My rescue story. You are, you are. You are my rescue story. Amen. How many worship God that He's a God that rescues us, provides for us today? Um, I'd like to lead you in a point of just giving. And on the screen is there several ways that you can give. You can give on our website 24-7. You can also give um, right now, text to give. I'm in the process of doing that right now, and it's going to do the, I'm doing 77977, and then the keyword will be living faith. You can do that upper, lower caps, or however you want to go crazy on that. You can do that as long as you put living faith, all one word today. And um, so generously, and God is with us because God has blessed us, and God has been so faithful. You give according to the measure that you've been blessed today, amen, and you decide to do that, and God will bless you, Amen. As we pray for the tithe and offering, Father, touch the people uh, of living faith and thank you for their support, God. I pray that you would rebuke the devourer um, today off of them because of their tithe that's come to this house from their house today. And thank you, God, what leaves our hands right now uh, to your hands right now. You multiply because you're good to us right now. We thank you for your ability to do that, Father, because you're supernatural, you're awesome, you're powerful, and you're good. In the name of Jesus, we bless the tithe, we bless the offering right now, in the name of Jesus. I'd like to just bless you as a benediction right now. If you'll lift your hands right now, boys and girls, 
a junior right now, children, mama right now, lift your hands right now, grandmother right now, lift your hands right now in the presence of God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you his peace, his shalom peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.